infidel Muslim, and we're going to show him Jesus. And this is a true story, by the way. So I got up that morning on Sunday, and I was thinking, ah, oh, man, you know. We went to church. Strangely enough, the preacher was preaching out of the Old Testament about salvation coming at the time of David, which, which really puzzled me because according to Christianity, it's coming through Jesus. And it really, that opened the door for me, but that comes up later in the story. Why was he saying there's salvation before Jesus? That's interesting. Now, when I get there to my father's store, I'm looking around, you know. I'm looking for somebody wearing, you know, a long white robe and some kind of black, you know, thing over that, with a long beard and, hmm. I guess I was looking for me, what I? <laughs> Anyhow, when I get in there, I don't see this guy. By the way, imama, sword, everything. I, I told Khomeini, maybe. This is what I had pictured. I said, where is he? I'm ready. My father said, he's over here. I said, where? He said, here. This is a normal guy. He was normal. He didn't, he don't, didn't have a beard. He didn't have any hair at all. How do you do? I told him my name. He introduced himself. His name is Muhammad. I said, how do you do? After the niceties of, hello, how are you? How's everything? I said, uh, do you believe in God? He said, yes. Oh, yeah? Hmm, sure. I said, but do you believe in the God of Moses? He said, yeah. Abraham? Yeah. Hmm. What about David and Suleiman? He said, yeah. So when I meet this man, I'm impressed that he's believing these things, but I thought maybe he's just saying it. So I even asked him, what about Jesus? Because I thought maybe they're kind of... First, I thought Muslims were like Hindus. That was first. And then when he said he believed in some of the things of the Bible, I said, okay, maybe they're like Jews. So that's when I said, yes, but what about Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? And he said, yes. I said, okay, okay, wait a minute. This is going to be easy. I can convert this guy. So I agreed that we're going to do business with him. And in fact, I took him immediately out to have tea together. We sit together, drink tea, talk a little while. And I start trying to preach him right away. I'm in the Bible. I got it right there. Flip it open. Genesis. Let's talk about Abraham. What do you know about Abraham? Abraham, he had two sons, you see. And blah, 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 blah. And I'm doing all the preaching to him. Hmm? Can you imagine this? And he sat there. Hmm. Okay. He's a graduate of Allah's heart. And he's, mm -hmm. Like this. Get me? You know what I'm saying? Well, it happened that during Ramadan, some of his friends that he was staying with, they had to move their apartment around or something, and he was going to go stay in the masjid for itikaf. In Ramadan. It's normal. We didn't understand. I thought he has nowhere to go. And I told my dad, this man has nowhere to go. And my dad said, no, he's got money. I said, no, no, he doesn't. Daddy, I'm telling you, he has no place to go. I heard him say he's going to go live in the mosque to a Christian. If you're going to live in the church, ooh, that's the worst. So I said, let me let me offer that he can stay at our place. And my dad said, no, you, you didn't. That, don't do that. That's not right. I said, no, I'm going to offer it to him. I went to him and I said, how would you like to come stay at our place? He said, no, no, no. I want to go and stay there. I want to stay in the mosque and something good. good. I said, oh, man, look at this poor man. Oh, my God. He doesn't know, you know. I, he just, oh, poor soul. Please come and stay in our house. And he said, no, I can't. I, I need to go stay over there. I said, look at, I'm scratching his dignity. So I told him, listen, no, 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 no. I want you to come and you can pay. You can pay money and stay with us. He said, how much? I said, $15 a week. Which in America is like nothing. $15 is nothing. I said, and then he kind of hesitated. I said, and we'll pay for all the food. Well, you eat $15 worth of food in one day in America. He said, okay, all right. And I told my dad later, I said, see how I did that? Because now he'll stay with us. 
He knows he's getting a good deal on the food and I was making it all about money. Well, I didn't know he wanted to come and stay with us. He wanted to learn about how are Americans and how is the Dawah going to be. What do we believe? Especially people who are preaching. So he came and stayed in our house. And I said, well, now that's good. I'll travel with him and go with him in places and he'll see and he'll learn about Christianity. As we were traveling and working together, we put up tables just like this and booths and things and set things out for people to come and look at them and sell things. And I caught him one time. He, when somebody wanted to take something from the front, he took it from the back and gave it to him. And I looked at him. And the next time somebody started to take something, he took from the back and gave it to him. I said, hey, Mohammed, we take the stuff from the front because that's the old stuff. The new stuff in the back, just hold it back. You know what I'm saying? This is dated material. Get rid of the junk first. He said, no, I can't. In my religion, we can't sell something unless we give the people the best. I said, hmm, got me on that one. And I'm supposed to be telling him about a better deal. I said, okay, okay, yeah, whatever. You're never going to make any money, though. But that's all right. Over a period of time, I came to learn a lot of things. Also about being humble. A lot. Because this man was obviously well-educated, very articulate. He could really talk about a lot of subjects. In fact, I tried to debate with him about many things. But he was so wise and well-educated that he could see what I was doing and he would take it easy and let me win every debate. I could win any debate with him if, if he wanted me to. But if he wanted me to lose, I was going to lose. It was, this was how well he could handle it. Now, what happened, one of the preachers that I knew, another preacher, who used to carry a big cross and walk down the street so people would stop and talk to him about religion, he had a heart attack and he went to the hospital. So I went to the hospital to visit him. And while I was visiting him, I met another man in the hospital who was in a wheelchair. This gentleman had a problem. He didn't want to talk to anybody. And I told him, let, let me witness to you. Let me share the message of Jesus with you. So I took out my Bible. And again, I start telling him about a prophet, Prophet Yunus, alayhi salam. And I'm telling them, look at Jonah. He's in the belly of the whale. He's in the sea. He's down there like this. And who knows how long. And suffering like this, you don't have as big a problem as that. And God saved him so he could save you too. He said, hmm, didn't want to talk to me. I asked him, what's your name? He don't want to tell me. Where are you from? He said, I'm from Venus. So what's that? Well, we do have, there is a Venus, Texas, by the way. But he said, you know, he's from another planet. So I kept, each time I would go, I would talk to him, witness to him. Finally, one day, he started crying. I was pushing his wheelchair around. I took him down, I rolled him around different places. He started crying one day. He said, I'm going to confess something to you. I need to confess something to you. Now, to a Catholic, confession means you're going to tell the priest all your sins. And then he's going to forgive you. Well, I wasn't Catholic. And I told him, listen, I'm not Catholic and I'm not a priest. I'm a preacher. He said, I know better than you do. I am a priest. I said, oh, my God. 